Bob Schieffer of the Sunday morning show Face the Nation did a rant against money in politics. This was out of the blue, but he did a good job. Let's listen. Here's something to think about as you go to vote. Congress hasn't done anything in years, yet these midterm elections will be the most expensive in history, just like the last ones. Four billion dollars this time around. That's billion with a B. A small question. Do you think you're getting your money's worth? Better candidates? Better government? I doubt that. But it does raise yet another question. Can you name a commodity or a product that gets worse and worse, that produces less and less of what it is supposed to produce, yet gets more expensive? Maybe you can name one, but the only thing I can think of is American politics. I'm not blaming it on Republicans or Democrats. I'm blaming it on Republicans and Democrats who have turned what used to be an amateur sport into a professional business where the jobs that volunteers used to do for free have been outsourced to professionals. That's also unique to politics. Outsourcing something you are getting free to someone who will charge you for it and in the process winding up with an inferior product, a government that remains in permanent gridlock. The right to vote is our proudest possession, but the way it has become debased by money shames us all. Okay, he slightly missed the point there, but overall, I'm going to give it to him because it's the best thing in a while I've seen on TV about corruption and money and politics. The part where I think he's off is where he brought up how nowadays there are professionals doing the stuff that volunteers used to do, and he acts like, and I don't know whether this is on purpose or not, uh, or if he knows or not, but he makes it seem like that's the key issue. That's the heart of the problem. The problem is that this has become, that elections have become more institutionalized and a, a bigger fiasco in terms of the, the theater around it. That's not the heart of the problem. In fact, I really have no problem with, say, more people who are paid staffers working on people's campaigns for whatever reason. But the other th stuff that he said really gets at the heart of the problem. The heart of the problem is... We've sold out our government to the highest bidders. The problem is the corporations, Wall Street, the billionaires, the rich, the donor class, these are the people and these are the institutions that give money to the politicians. Usually, over 90% of the time, the politician that raises the most money ends up winning. And then when they get in office, all they do is pay back the people who gave them money with special favors, which is why you hear about ExxonMobil getting a tremendous amount uh, in terms of uh, subsidies. It's why you hear the big banks get $80 billion plus every year in subsidies, and the list goes on and on, because they paid the politicians, so now the politicians, whenever anything comes up for a vote that helps out their buddies, it's I scratch your back, you scratch mine. The problem with that is the American people are fucked over, because our government, the whole purpose of representative democracy is, well, we vote for people, and then they... Uh, put into law our feelings and our opinions on things as long as it doesn't violate a constitutional issue. So, for example, um, take the minimum wage. 80% of the American people want the minimum wage to be raised. We haven't gotten that yet. Why? Because the government is not representing the people. If they were, that would already be the law. They're representing the corporations who are the only people in the country that do not want it raised. Universal background checks for guns. 90%, 93%, maybe mid 85-ish uh, percent or so, depending on what poll you look at and at what time. But that's the percentage of people that want a universal background check. We didn't get that in place. Why didn't we get that in place? Because they're not representing the American people. They're representing the NRA and the gun manufacturers. And they happen to be the only groups in the country that say, and it's not even the entire groups, just the leadership of the NRA are the only people in the country who don't want a universal background check. The members of the NRA even say, yeah, we could do a universal background check. That's fine. We got nothing to hide. So we're talking about the last people who should be running the government <laughs> are running the government. I mean, there was a political science study that came out about this recently where they said, if you look at public opinion from, I think it was 1980 and onward in the United States, uh, the majority, so the public, 
we have no say in the legislation we end up getting. The people who do have a say and who get exactly what they want, again, are the rich. So Bob Schieffer is hinting at it, and he seems to actually hit the nail on the head with multiple points there. So I'm going to give him credit. I think that's overall a, a good job. He is talking about corruption, which is rarely, if ever, done in the mainstream media. But that last part threw me off because I'm like, wait, did was he right by accident? Because when he starts talking about volunteer jobs, going to pros, I'm like, what do you mean? The people who are sending out the mailers? I honestly don't care if they're paid or not paid or if they're staffers or not staffers. The thing that matters is we need to have publicly financed elections, period. We need clean elections, which means uh, you take, a, take away all the private donations, you take away all the corporate money, take away all the Wall Street money, you uh, give whoever runs their allotted X amount of money after a certain process, and that's what they run on. So we have an actual debate of ideas instead of a, a debate between dueling donors and whose donors are going to get their special favors implemented into law.